Hi, my name's Sue and I'm a clinical scientist here at the University of Southampton Auditory Implant Service and I'm going to talk through some of your equipment today. This is the Nucleus N6 or CP910 speech processor. I'm going to talk you through how to take the equipment apart, put it back together and troubleshoot for any problems. If I go through first telling you the names of each of the pieces that make up the processor, you have the coil with a magnet in it, and this is what transmits the signal across the skin. You've then got a lead that connects the coil to the processing unit. The processing unit then has a battery and an ear hook. I'm going to take the pieces apart first. If we start with the processor, the processor has microphones that picks up the sound. The sound is then converted into an electrical signal and passed on via the coil into the implant. It has an ear hook which simply clicks off and clicks back on. The ear hooks come in different sizes. The battery connects via a bevel. It sits on at an angle and then you twist it to attach it. Again, to take it off, twist and it comes apart. This is quite a durable connection, but it, you do need to make sure that it's tightly on. If it's slightly un, undone, then you could have a problem. For small children, if you're worried about the battery being taken on and off, you can lock the battery onto the processor. In your kit that you get when you get all the processor, you should have one of these pens, which on the end has a screwdriver. You can lift the flap here, and at the base, there's a a silver lever that you push across and then the battery is now locked. Reverse it to unlock. The lead slots into the hole below the microphones and buttons. If you angle the lead downwards towards the battery and it slots in and then the other end of the lead runs in to the coil. You need to get the lead at the right angle. There's a curved shape at the top of the coil and a curved shape on the lead. If you match those up, it slots in. Make sure they're in firmly on both ends. The lead can be the weak point of the processor because of general wear and tear when you're putting it on and off of your head. This can become worn and broken. So it's one of the first things you check if your process is not working properly. Moving on to the coil, the magnet strength will be selected by your audiologist. It's quite important to get it right. If it's too strong, you can cause damage to the skin. And if it's too weak, it will keep falling off. So it's a fine line and your audiologist will regularly check the magnet strength. If ever you get soreness, pain or redness, you need to contact the centre because we'll need to change your magnet strength. To take the magnet out of the coil, you can twist and then there we go. You shouldn't need to do that very often. And again, twist it to put it back in. 
there is a number on the base of the magnet which tells you how strong the magnet is. The microphones on the processor are picking up the signal. There's two buttons, the lowest button nearest the coil lead is the on off button. So if I press and hold, the processor should go off. There we go, and the light's gone. The processor will also switch on and off when you add the battery on. To switch the processor back on, you either put the battery on or press and hold and you've got the light. So you know your process is switched on. The flashing orange light means there's a problem and the problem is it's got no implant to communicate with. So once you put the coil onto your head, the light would stop flashing. If I do that again, you'll see a green flash and the green flash denotes the program that you're on. So I'll turn it off with the battery this time. So that's switched off. Switch it back on. One green flash means that the, pro the processor is on program one. The audiologist will set up the number of programs at your appointments and tell you what each program does. If I press this on the off switch again, it changes the program. So it's a short press to change the program. And as we saw, there was two green flashes, which means it's on program two now. If I press it again, we're now on program three. The Nucleus 6 has up to four programs and it cycles through one, two, three, four, and then back to one again. As I say, the orange light will disappear once you connect it onto the, on the person's head. If it doesn't, that means there's a problem. And the flashing orange light, once it's connected to the processor, is telling you there's something wrong somewhere and it's not communicating with the implant. If you follow the link below, you can find some more information out about what the lights mean. The N6 processor comes with a remote. This is useful for changing programs and also for troubleshooting the device to see if, where there's a problem. To switch on the remote, you need to press and hold the OK button and you'll see the cochlear sign on the screen. It's telling me this is locked. There's a lock on the side to prevent the buttons from being pressed when it's in your bag or somewhere. So I can unlock that by sliding that switch on the side. There's a little green dot there to say that it's unlocked. The first time we set up a remote, it will ask us which language we want to use. It won't do that every time, but here you need to press OK for English. And then we also need to make the remote communicate with the processor. So every time you get a replacement processor or a replacement re remote, you will need to repair the equipment. You do this by taking the coil and attaching it to the back of the remote. Make sure the processor is switched on. So you should have a flashing light on the processor. And then the screen comes up asking you to pair the processor. Yes, we like to do that, so we press OK and it pairs and it comes up with a tick and now we have the programs that have been set for this processor. To change the programs, you use the keys above and below the coloured boxes. So program 1, press here, program 2, press there, program 3 and program 4. In order to troubleshoot, if you can see if there's a problem, you need to press OK. And at the moment, it's telling us there's a problem connecting the coil to the implant. And that's because this is not attached to a patient's head. So once you put that coil 
onto the patient's head, you'd then get, hopefully, a, a picture of the processor all green. So if I click on OK again, this screen shows on the left here how much battery life of the processor you have left. The connection of your processor and how it's working. So this would stop flashing and it would all be green once you put the coil onto the head. And then you have a microphone checker at the bottom, which as I'm talking, you can see the microphone is working and it's picking up the sound as I'm talking. The button on the side of the remote is used to put the processor onto the telecoil setting. If you press a quick press, then on the screen it says telecoil on and the telecoil sign will remain there as long as the telecoil is on. So to switch it off, it's another quick press and then it says telecoil off and it disappears from the screen. The same button is used to connect to your accessories, your wireless accessories, such as a mini mic. In order to, to connect to that, you use the same button. You press and hold the button down and the light flicks blue. And then on the screen, you get the MM sign for mini mic. To switch it off, again, press that button and the sign disappears from the screen. I hope that was helpful. If you need any further assistance, please do let us know. We're always happy to help here at the Auditory Implant Service at the University of Southampton.